Repeating patterns like ropes, chains and braids can be great additions to your sculptures. Let's find out some techniques to create these in Blender. We'll focus on creating the chain first. Start off by hitting Shift A and then selecting the cube. Enter sculpt mode and scale. Scale on the Y axis by hitting S and then Y and the same with the Z axis. Then turn on the sculpt symmetry or the Z and the Y axis as well. Use the voxel remesher to give the cube some more geometry. I'm using a custom sculpt pies add-on here just to make the remeshing and other tasks a little quicker. If you visit my Gumroad then you can download the add-on there and there's also installation instructions. And then just using the standard brush, holding control and digging in so that this will be the single chain link. I keep forgetting to use the screen keys add-on during recordings. I'll do my best to remember this in future. And then using grab to sort of pinch it in in the middle. Now I'm using draw sharp to just define the inside shape a little better. If you're creating this chain for 3D printing, then it's important to not go in too deep, otherwise you'll create lots of islands and it'll be difficult to support. Hitting Shift A again, creating a Bezier curve. And then in Edit Mode, by hitting Tab, you can hit the S key when all of the nodes are selected and scale up the curve. And then we go to the Modifiers panel and we find Add Modifier and find the Array Modifier. We change the fit type to fit curve and then select the curve. Using shift A again and adding an empty with plain arrows. And then ticking the object offset and selecting this empty. If we then hit R and then hit the X key, rotate on the X axis and then type on the keyboard 90 for 90 degrees. This will offset every other chain link to be rotated 90 degrees. And then if you tweak the relative offset, you can get the distance just right so it looks just like a chain. Uh, now I'm adding another modifier called Curve. If you select the Curve object as the curve that we created, and you see it fits nicely to that curve. So we're able to select the Curve points and hit the R key to rotate and the G key to move. Quite handy tool is the this tilt option, and as you click and drag around the point, it um, it allows you to rotate that point. Also, you can use the the scale tool here, or you can hit Alt and S while selecting a node, and then you can scale up and down different points. I don't find this particularly useful for the ch a chain, but perhaps for the braid or the rope, it's much more useful. So next is a rope. So we need two things to start with, with a rope. We're creating a circle curve and we're creating an empty arrows. So we now need to snap the camera to the top. So we're looking down on those objects. And now I'm adding an array modifier. Up the count to four. Untick the relative offset and tick the object offset. And then select that empty we just created. I'll rotate the empty by hitting R and then type 180 to rotate it 180 degrees on the Z axis. Select the circle and hit the tab and then make sure all the nodes are selected and hit G. You can move the circle into a position like I've got it there so that all of the circles are meeting in the middle. This is important for 3D printing so you don't have a hole in the middle. And now I'm adding a screw modifier and then change the screw value so that it's higher. And you might notice, depending on the direction you go in, that the normals are flipped. If you tick the flip on the normals lower down, you can fix that. And then change the screw value until it looks, it looks uh, natural to you as a rope. And then I've just checked the merge option there to merge the strands together. Now I'm adding a Bezier curve again in edit mode, scaling up the points. 
And now I'm adding another array modifier and change the type to fit curve and select that curve that we created. Change the relative offset so that the Z is one and the others are zero. And then add a curve modifier and change the curve object to that Bezier curve. And then the you'll notice the rope fits nicely and it will extend based on how big the curve is. So if you hit the E key while selecting a node, you can extend the curve, create a new point on the curve, similar to how you would if you're editing a mesh you wanted to create an extra vertex. And if you select the two end points and hit the F key, you can fill the loop. I tend to keep a copy of these objects just in a blend file so I can come back to them and duplicate them later. Okay, let's create a braid. So this is handy for uh, beards and hair and things like that. It's in Shift A and then selecting the cube. Hitting the one number one key so that I can select several vertices and delete them. So hitting the E key after selecting that bottom vertex, then hitting the Y key and 2 or 1 on the keyboard, and that will move it, move that new vertex 1 or 2 units, depending on how you have it set up in Blender. We're aiming to get it so that it moves away from that corner vertex at equal distance. I'm adding an array modifier, and I'm up in the count to 4 changing the relative offset so that so that the x y and z are all at one and then you see how they connect up together nicely from that i'm checking the merge as well add in a subdivision surface just to smooth out that first strand so now i'm adding a skin modifier to give that first strand some thickness and now add another array modifier And while in edit mode of the cube, you can hit Control A to scale the points. Just adding another subdivision surface modifier so we can smooth out the skin. With that array modifier, just tweak the relative offset. So if you just copy the values I've got here, whereas it does take a little bit of filling to get right. But if you set it up the same way I have, then you should get the same result. Just using Control A in edit mode again to do a tweak the size. Change the final array modifier to three count, and then change the first array to three as well. Tweaking the subdivision surface modifiers we've got will increase or decrease the resolution depending on how detailed you want it to be. And then once you've, once you've got all the modifiers together, you can convert it to a mesh. If you hit the N key and then select effect only origins, then you're able to use the G key and move the origin so that it's at the, the start of the braid and rotate it so that there's, so you have an axis that's pointing straight through the braid. And this will help when we add in a curve and want it to follow that curve in a moment. So if we create a new Bezier curve, if you enable copy attributes menu add-on in preferences, then if you select the braid and then the curve, you hit control C, you'll be able to copy the rotation and location of the curve. And this is important for when we're aligning it to the curve using the modifier. So we can choose the Z axis and it appears correctly. And then add the curve modifier to the braid and then use the Z deform axis, then that will follow that curve nicely. If you then hit tab and go into edit mode for the curve, you can use the Alt S shortcut to scale each point and then you can make it taper at the end.
So there you go. There's some different techniques for creating some repeating patterns, which hopefully will improve your sculptures. Don't forget to check out the Gum Road for free miniatures and sculpting resources. Also, I have a Patreon, so consider supporting me for the creation of videos like these in the future. Thanks to everybody who supported me so far. I'll see you in the next video.